A question you may never have been asked before is this. What are you, a boy or a girl? Well, that's easy. I'm a girl because I have a... <clears throat> Can you at least listen for a bit before you say something completely ignorant, Sharon? <laughs> now, we'll get to why this question is missing an option later in the video. But for now, let's start with the response. How do you know the answer to it? For most people, the reaction is simple, while for others, it requires contradicting their very DNA. In this video, all answers about the nature of being transgender will be revealed, starting with the very basics. Transgender? That's fake. Whatever you're born as is what you are. Actually, no. The explanation to what you are lies in two different parts of you, your chromosomes and your brain. Your chromosomes determine your biological sex. Haha, uh -huh, you said sex. Whereas your brain determines your gender. So you mean to say they're two different things? But that doesn't make any sense. It actually does, if you let me tell you instead of interrupting every five seconds. Let's back things up a bit. How does this all happen, and what does it mean? Before you were born, while you were still nothing but a clump of cells with a whole lot of potential, your mom and dad both gave you a very important gift. Chromosomes. These carry the genetic material that determine all of your characteristics from your hair color to your height. And my stunning beauty as well. Well, one thing they definitely didn't give you is a sense of modesty. Two of these chromosomes, one from your mom and one from your dad, are special because they determine your biological sex. You get an X from your mom and either an X or a Y from your dad. If your chromosomes are XX, you're biologically female, whereas someone with the XY combination is biologically male. It is this combination of chromosomes before you are even alive that chooses whether you're male or female, therefore dictating what's in your pants or your genitalia. Ha! Huh. I bet you won't say what genitalia is because this is a video for kids. Sure I will. It's... Now, there are special cases. About 1% of the population is something called intersex, meaning that they may have a different combination of sex chromosomes, or be born with one set of genitalia that later develops into the other with puberty. Some people recognize intersex as an I in LGBTQIA, but the truth is that the majority of intersex individuals do not want to be seen as part of the LGBT community for their genetic disorder alone and instead would rather you to regard them as regular human beings and be given the respect you would give to others. But then how do these people know if they're a boy or a girl? The same way that anyone knows, because gender is actually separate to biological sex, and it's all in your head, literally. The truth is that when someone asks you, are you a boy or a girl, you don't have to check in your pants to find out. Well, of course not. I, you already know, or are in the process of figuring out the answer, because your brain has the ability to tell you what you are, regardless of your predetermined biological sex. Why is this? Studies have shown that there is a boy brain and a girl brain, meaning that there are differences in the brains of males and females. You mean to tell me that there are actual physical differences between the brains of girls and boys? Yep, take a look. You are called cisgender when your brain's gender matches up with your chromosomes. So I'm a cisgender girl because I have XX chromosomes? And because your brain tells you that you are a girl. Yes, on the other hand, you are transgender if your brain matches a different gender than the sex you were assigned at birth. In fact, experiments done on trans individuals have proven that, despite having the body of one sex, they have the brain structure that is typically attributed to the other. So you see, being transgender isn't a choice at all. It's literally determined by the structure of your brain. I guess I can't argue with science. Now, some people believe that it stops there. That due to some mix of hormones given in the womb, some people are the opposite gender than they originally appear to be. But the truth is that it's even more complex than that. What? But this was just starting to make sense! So there's no scientific proof yet of a third type of brain, one that is neither male nor female, it can be concluded that a third gender, known as non-binary because it doesn't follow the two-sex system of male and female, exists based on irrefutable evidence found in culture. The truth is that many different civilizations have had people who are neither male nor female integrated into their customs. The most famous of these is the Native American two-spirited people, who were thought to have the spirit of both a man and a woman within them, making them revered in over 155 aboriginal cultures in America for their special powers. I still don't believe it, so what if tons of cultures have established a third gender? That doesn't mean it's real! 
But if you look at the world now, and millennia ago too, there are thousands of individuals that identify as non-binary, or other genders besides male and female, which I've identified in a video that should pop up on the screen about now. If it's something that's existed for so long, then why wouldn't it be real? So how do I know if someone is non-binary? Those who are non-binary usually go by they them pronouns instead of being referred to as a he or a she, and will dress in an androgynous style, or a style that doesn't match society's definition of being associated with males or females. But just like you and me, these people will present themselves in whatever way makes them feel most comfortable. So the only way to truly know is to ask. But why? They do this to calm their gender dysphoria. Though being transgender itself isn't a mental disorder, all transgender people, including those who are non-binary, experience a mental illness known as gender dysphoria. If you feel distressed about the fact that your biological sex doesn't match up with your brain's gender, and it makes you uncomfortable to be referred to with incorrect pronouns, then you most likely have this dysphoria. This doesn't mean that you can't love yourself and be transgender, but it does mean that in order to be transgender, you do have to feel more comfortable as the gender you are presenting yourself to be. Meaning that you feel a sense of gender euphoria when you are recognized as your true gender. If someone is gender fluid, meaning that their gender can change from one day to the next, what's actually happening is that there are some days when they have a lot of dysphoria and they feel as if their gender doesn't match their sex, and some days where they don't have dysphoria, so their gender and sex do match. There are several ways trans individuals calm their dysphoria, and these ways differ depending on whether you're a trans girl, a trans boy, or a non-binary person, the ways of which were already discussed. Trans girls may at first try to look more feminine by tucking their genitalia away, wearing a push-up bra, applying makeup, speaking in a higher pitched voice, growing their hair long and shaving their face, and dressing in a more traditionally feminine way. Eventually, they may undergo hormone therapy to get shots of estrogen, the female hormone, to go through puberty once again, this time growing breasts and becoming more curvy. The most extreme and final step in a trans girl's transition is to undergo sex reassignment surgery, a costly procedure in which their male genitalia is crafted into that of a female's. For trans boys, the process of transitioning becomes a way to look more masculine. Trans boys may wear a binder to flatten their chest, pack with a bundle of fabric to emulate the genitalia of a male, speak with a deeper voice, contour to appear more angular in the face, cut their hair short and wear baggy and masculine clothes. They too will undergo hormone therapy, but with the male testosterone to lose their curves, grow hair, and deepen their voice. The final step of a trans boy's transition also involves sex reassignment surgery. But in their case, skin will be added to create male genitalia. But if they look like their actual gender, then how can I tell that someone is trans? The honest truth is that, just like if someone is gay or bi, it's none of your business unless they decide to tell you that it is. You don't need to worry about whether or not someone is trans, because they aren't hiding some deep dark secret. They're expressing who they really are inside. Just make sure to use the pronouns people tell you to use for them, even if you don't think they're correct. Wow, it's really that easy? Yeah, in the end, all you need to do is give people the same respect that you would want to be given. Because everyone, regardless of their gendered identity, is human. I hope this video helps you to understand better what it's like to be transgender. I am not transgender myself, so all of this knowledge comes from research that I've done on the topic. However, if you have any questions that I didn't answer in the video, be sure to comment them down below. Thanks for watching! and let me know what other topics you want to become more educated on. Right now in the Trump administration, in the rest of the world too, trans people are really struggling to receive recognition and legal protection. In fact, Trump just passed a policy that trans people do not legally exist. And this is very dangerous because it's starting to get to a point where LGBT people are not being given the same rights as straight people, which is pretty dangerous. The one way to kill ignorance and to kill hate is with education. So if you are one of those people who started off being a bit hateful and a bit intolerant of trans people, I hope that this video has made an impact and perhaps helped you change your views a little bit and just recognize that trans people are real. They are human, just like everyone else and they're going through gender dysphoria, a mental illness, 
And the way to cure this mental illness is to be recognized as the gender that they actually are. So thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.